Hey everyone, it's Josh. I want to talk for a few minutes about being a disciple of Jesus. There are certain passages in the Bible that are really challenging, and I want to talk about one of those today, because words like this tend to expose our self-protective reflexes. But I hope that they cut you to the heart as much as they have for me. This is Luke 14, starting at verse 26, where Jesus says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Well, as people living far away from the world of Jesus, both in time and in place, I think this sounds pretty strange to us, but that's because the idea of hate really in this context is not what we think it is. The parallel passage in Matthew 10 says, if you love your mother or father more than me, so hatred in this context is not bitterness or unforgiveness, but rather to be loyal or love something or someone less. And I think there's other examples in the Bible that make this clear, like in Genesis 29, when Jacob is said to have hated his first wife, Leah, but then really in reality, it was just that he loved Rachel more than Leah. And interestingly enough, in the first century, loving Jesus more than someone's own family really had financial implications because of inheritance and land and these kinds of things that were passed down. So you'd potentially be setting yourself up for a really difficult future if you were loyal to Jesus above your own family. But the next phrase that Jesus says here is pretty important. He says, if you don't love me more than your family or your own life, he says, you cannot be my disciple. Again, in English, I think this is a little bit difficult because Jesus is not saying, I won't allow you to be my disciple. The Greek word here is related to the word power, like we read in Acts 1, when Jesus says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so the Greek word here in Luke 14 means ability. Okay, So it's probably better translated as, you are not able to be my disciple. So what's Jesus saying? He's saying, if you don't love me more than your own family or even your own life, you are not able to be my disciple. Why? Well, because Jesus showed and embodied what his, uh, what loyalty and love for God looked like, what the path that we were to walk as his disciples, which is to disavow loyalty to this present evil age and set your hope fully on God's vindication in the resurrection. I'll talk more about that in a second. Now, Jesus in verse 27, he says this, Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Again, that same idea. He is unable to be my disciple. And I think this language is familiar to us and uh, even more so to the first century Jew because they lived under Roman oppression. And the Romans had invented crucifixion and made it a common death for insurrectionists and anyone who would stand up against the authority of the empire. So the idea of carrying your own cross is referencing you actually bringing it to your own public crucifixion. And of course, this is what Jesus does himself later in Luke's gospel. But what's Jesus's point here? He's saying, if you don't accept martyrdom, if you don't accept that being my disciple is going to cost you everything, then you won't be able to be my disciple. He's not saying that they should go and be suicide bombers by any means, but that there's going to be a massive cost to someone's life in this age if they actually want to be his disciple. I'll mention more of this in a second as well. So Jesus in verse 28, he continues and he says, For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not first sit down or will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes out against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be or is unable to be my disciple. So what about this guy who builds the tower? He starts to build it and every one of his friends and his family and his acquaintances see him building it and then he builds the foundation but he couldn't finish it because he hadn't counted the cost from the beginning. Now this would have been pretty impactful for Jesus' hearers in the first century because culture back in the day was an honor-shame culture and it would have been socially shameful to have others seeing you fall short of what you set yourself to do. So Jesus is saying that if you didn't make the commitment to begin with, then you're not going to be able to finish. Again, you're not going to be able to be my disciple to the end unless you accept from the beginning that it's going to cost you everything. So 
why does this matter for a 21st century Gentile who wants to be a disciple of Jesus? Well, we can read the Apostle Paul's letters to Gentiles back in his day where he writes things like, imitate me as I imitate Christ from 1 Corinthians 11, or let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus from Philippians 2. And I think we can look at Paul's life and the life of those early Gentile disciples of Jesus and expect the words of Jesus in Luke 14 to have significant meaning for us today as well. To be a follower of Jesus and to run the race, as Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, is to expect what he said just a chapter before in 2 Timothy 3, where he said that all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And Peter would say this to some of his letters to some Jewish disciples who were experiencing persecution. He says, why are you freaking out as if something strange is happening to you? And guys, this is what we told you from the beginning, that it would be costly to follow Jesus. Friends, this is not radical. This is normal. And this has become so lost in Western Christianity. It seems absurd in the West that, that there's any sort of cost to follow Jesus. And oftentimes when the gospel is presented, it comes across as just Jesus loves you so much, just invite him into your life. Like we can just say a prayer and have some Jesus in our heart and expect our life circumstances to be better or body to be healed or life just to get a lot easier. But we can't domesticate these words of Jesus from Luke 14. We have to ponder them and we have to let them have their intended effect in our minds and in our hearts. That if someone wants to be a disciple, it means counting the cost now. And it means that if you don't decide that it's gonna cost you everything, then you won't finish or you'll be offended and angry when you discover that there is a cost involved. Like when the breakthrough you've been looking for doesn't come or when your friend group rejects you because of your stance on this issue or that issue because of your loyalty to Jesus or when suffering comes your way as a result of your obedience or when people mistreat you or slander or falsely accuse you that you don't fight back to regain your reputation or your lost money or whatever or you don't seek to bring vengeance on those who did you wrong but instead you commit yourself to to him who will judge righteously on the day of the Lord. And even in things go easy in life, when, when life is easy and you realize that there's no formula to preserve that awesomeness and you remember that this age is full of sin and wickedness and brokenness and it will be until Jesus returns. And so in both situations, you set your hope fully on the age to come and you embrace the difficulty and the pain and the stigma of living for that day and you deny your fleshly lusts of pride and greed and sexual immorality and contentment and ease and bitterness and power and position and all of those things for the sake of bearing witness to Jesus. Guys, Jesus said that difficulties in this age would come. Some will even lose their lives because of their loyalty to Jesus. Everything on the scale of misunderstanding to martyrdom is fair game for a disciple. And guys, if we don't accept that this is going to cost us everything, then we won't finish. It doesn't matter what this pastor says or that pastor says, Jesus is the one who sets the standard. And if we don't embrace this from the beginning, we'll get to a point where the cost is shoved in our face and we won't finish. We don't want to get to the end after having said, I'm all in and have to give it up and give up on it all because of the cost. Guys, we need Jesus' words to pierce us here. But also, we need to keep what he said in Matthew 19, 29. Keep in mind this to reassure us. He says, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Now, as I've mentioned on some of my other videos, and as I'm sure I'll say on other videos in the future, eternal life should be seen here as a first century Jew would have understood it. Not floating on a cloud and playing a harp and an endless sing-along in the sky, but as having a resurrected body that never dies, living on this earth with the Jewish Messiah, Jesus, reigning from Jerusalem over the rest of the nations in righteousness and justice. The more that this certain hope is clear and defined, the more that it makes sense to live for that day and anticipate our resurrection and vindication on the day of Christ Jesus. And so I think one of the main reasons why this message of costly discipleship is not often understood or taken seriously in the West is because we've largely lost this first century perspective on the future. And we've left hope as kind of this general expectation of something good without really defining what hope is. 
The day of the Lord, the age to come is what drove discipleship. It was the driver for discipleship for the apostles. And without a real day of judgment and a real reward of eternal life and a resurrected body in the age to come, to repent and to live as Jesus calls us to loses its urgency so quickly. So in future videos, I wanna talk about this a lot. It really only makes sense to give up everything and count the cost in this age if we have a clear hope of vindication and reward and resurrection for the age to come. Amen. Well, if this was helpful or encouraging, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, because we'll be talking much more on this. I made an earlier video on discipleship and self-denial that might also interest you, so I put the link in the description below. Check that out. God bless and Maranatha.